One of the uh, galleries that's recently opened in Missoula is the Convergence Gallery. Today we're going to be uh, visiting with the owner uh, Lillian Nelson and uh, we're actually, this is the closing day for an exhibit that's been up for a while, uh, the Von Common artists. They're a group of young, energetic, avant-garde artists that are doing some really creative work. We're going to take a look at some of those images and as the program suggests, uh, look before you speak, we're going to talk about them. And so we're thrilled to be able to be here at the Convergence Gallery today. Let's go in. We have Lillian Nelson with us today, and she's going to talk about a couple pieces. You know, as far as this program goes, we're tr attempting to keep a visual image and this program is attempting to raise the level of articulation around art, celebrate the artists who are local and creating art where we live, and uh, really examine how these images bubble up in our community. So, Lillian, thanks for having us today. Yeah, thank and you. And I'm thrilled that you are willing to talk about one or two of your pieces. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can walk over here. And okay. I was immediately attracted to this piece as we walked into the gallery. Uh, there's a lot going on in here. Yes. And uh, can you talk a little bit about this? Um, okay. Well, the piece is entitled, Give Me Your Least of These. Um, it, fairly obvious it was inspired by the Syrian gas attacks uh, back in, was it April, I believe? And the um, interesting thing was, is Sometimes I go in and out of listening to the news and I didn't hear about them the day it happened. But I was online the next day and suddenly all these videos and images were popping up everywhere and I'm like, what is going on? And just, I have three kids of my own so the horrendousness of it just hit me really hard, I think like it did most people. And this piece was born. Um, I originally made it for the prom common that Von Common put on in May. Um, and yeah, uh, to me, art is like therapy. It's like purging yourself of your emotions and your thoughts. And maybe, unfortunately, for the viewer, you now have to be burdened with that. But it, it really is a release. And so my message was basically partly because of the Syrian attacks and the new immigration laws trying to become enforced. Um, basically, what our country was originally established as as a country for everyone and how we can't just turn our backs on people because we're scared and um, coming from that from the supposedly Christian perspective we can say we're a Christian nation we're supposed to love one another um, so yeah Statue of Liberty is basically a representation of that as well as just being the icon for our country um, yeah one of the things I really <clears throat> enjoy about this piece is that, well, there's a lot of things I like about this piece. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not your traditional rectangle or square. It's mm -hmm. pieced together, and it's like a lot of these things you're piecing together in the news and responding to. And I love the controlled palette that's going on here, mm -hmm. kind of this... Uh, complementary colors going on with the mm -hmm. green and red and it's pretty ominous it's a really heavy piece you have some Christian uh, imagery going on here also with uh, you know this really powerful woman which should should be saying these this is what our country is about yeah. is caring and nurturing for the least in the world mm -hmm. and there's a lot of conflict going on around yes. that whole idea. And is this imagery of the United Nations? Or? That's Well, that's Atlas. Um, so that's the famous sculpture that's in New York. Okay. And, so and it's outside the UN. It is. Okay. That's kind of part of it. Um, it's also when it was first made, the artist was going for um, him being a representative representation of our capitalistic society and I don't think he meant it in the way that our capitalistic society has become um, but 
that's kind of the basic thing. Um, you know, our capitalism has grown into this. We serve ourselves. We don't serve the world. And if you go back in Greek mythology, Atlas, you know, he angered the gods. And then his punishment was to carry the weight of the world for eternity. So I kind of feel like that's the way our country is going, mm -hmm. in a way. We're carrying a bunch of weight, but we're pushing people out at the same time. But artists expressing these ideas is so hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Right. And uh, another thing I really w want to mention, I don't want to sidetrack mm -hmm. from the message, which is really powerful, but this triangular, there's kind mm -hmm. of a couple triangular things going on. And I think it's really successful as a composition. Thank you. You have this thing about um, the power of the representation of the United States and what mm -hmm. it should be and then the background. And you haven't w overworked any of these ideas. There's a simplicity about that and it's not too much to absorb or comprehend. It's really like it. Thank you. So, would you mind uh, talking about another work of yours? Uh, sure. Okay. Yep. Over Let's here. wander over to the other side of the gallery. And how long have you been part of uh, Von Kahn? Uh Just since past October. So, yeah. Did you... Uh, has this been your approach traditionally to take pieces and assemble them? Um, I started doing this about four years ago. Uh, well, basically after I finished school, I kind of took a lot of time off, had kids, you know, and didn't do much with art. And when I jumped back into it, for some reason, I really wanted to paint on wood, raw wood. And I don't know why, but I just wanted to take a bunch of bits and pieces and put them together and make one image out of them. One of the so, things that comes through with that is mm -hmm. that it, it reminds me, well, it's the ritual of art, mm -hmm. the ritual in the same way that maybe we're taking paint and daubing it on. Mm -hmm. It's additive. Yeah. And I would consider these almost assemblages in mm -hmm. some ways. And uh, that uh, you're also... If there's this message in it that you're assembling ideas yeah. and you're pulling ideas together. Oftentimes when people do that, sometimes they can't stop. <laughs> and I think right. that where these is, seem really successful to me is that you've limited, you know when to stop. Okay, and they feel I hope really, so. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you, and the you probably have seen this mm -hmm. in work where people can't stop and their ideas are way too much. So, But can you talk about the message in this work? Right. Um, well, this one was kind of interesting because <clears throat> I had a basic <clears throat> feeling in my mind of where I wanted to go with it, and then I found the quote later from um, Emerson that summed it up perfectly which was weird because I was like, oh yeah, that's what I was going for. But, but the basic idea was, you know, when you're out in nature, for some reason you feel that sort of oneness with nature, like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, and in the quote, he even brings up, you become this giant eye that just takes in everything and immerses everything and you are one with everything. You are part of God and everything. So mm -hmm. that's basically what I was trying to do in a kind of surreal manner. Mm -hmm. So you are yeah. not alone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and there's also a visual artist, his name is James Terrell. Mm -hmm. And he develops this whole concept and idea of the eyeball on the universe. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk inside a James Terrell sculpture, which this reminds me a lot okay. of, of staring out the pupil mm -hmm. into the universe, is controlling the light yeah. and the message. And uh, anyway, it's not always the best thing to bring up to an artist. <laughs> it reminds me of another artist, but yeah. I, there's this reference of to Emerson, and it totally makes sense. Yeah, so, thank you. So many art artists go to school, work for a while, and quit. 
Right. And there is a commitment on the part of all of the artists in here yep. that is great. You know, it's mm -hmm. inspiring for people who maybe have been here for a while. Mm -hmm. And that now this ven this venue and there's some other venues in the community that celebrate and draw attention to to artists and mm -hmm. artists expressing art in different ways. Right. And we're thankful for that. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the next artist we're going to uh, speak about or, or look at her work uh, is Lady Pajama. And uh, that is her artist persona. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it's, she's really an interesting artist because um, she's been at this quite a while mm -hmm. and her language is one that kind of flies in the face of the academy yeah, like right. all academic uh instruction uh, she's like a rebel <laughs> rebelling against the horizon line mm -hmm. <laughs> all of the figurative instruction and she's really embraced this language of folk art, but even beyond that, it's like uh, W. Faye spoke of art brute. And as you look at this, uh, there's, I mean, she's suggesting commissioning uh, a portrait of someone right. that you could, but as you look at this, it's like no portrait you've seen. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, well, would you really, uh, <laughs> commission a portrait like this. Mm -hmm. But it, again, it's like being a rebel mm -hmm. in the face of what's normally accepted. I think she's really a mature artist and really uh, developed in the language that she's using related to folk art, naive, and actually art brute. Mm -hmm. And much has been written about this, um, but sometimes we see it in Missoula, and it's just beginning to garner this acceptance. Right. And uh, this is a collage painting, mixed media. She's using a lot of popular images. She's using antique, older um, books, uh, sheets of music. She's layering and Naive isn't really the right word, but maybe uh, lines with the simplicity about them that, that uh, is about her approach. And she's been part of Von Common, isn't she one of the for founding members? She's not one of the founding members, but she's been around for quite a while, mm -hmm. yes. And, and it's interesting you say, you know, she's a rebel against academia. Well, she's entirely untrained artist. Mm -hmm. She never went to school for it or anything. And, but she wears that quite proudly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Which she should. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say two things about that. I mean, yes, people can be uh, self-taught, but the, this work and the work that I've seen of hers is resolved. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not overwork. She knows when to stop and she gets to the point of expressing what it is that she wants to express. A lot of them are really funny. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> and she ties in the title to the piece. So, and you know, it's kind of in your face, funny, suggesting, wouldn't you want a portrait like this of mm -hmm. someone you know, Yeah. you know? And I think that's really sincere mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I interpret it as really sincere. So, anyway, another Von Common artist who's been at it for a long time. Exactly. So, maybe we can look at another artist. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna swing over here. Yeah. <clears throat> this is one piece in the show by Alicia Hartis. Um, She's one of my favorite ceramicists in Missoula right now. Um, she just graduated a little over a year ago, I believe, from the U of M. And um, 
Alicia's work, it always has the interesting quality of when visitors come in and look at it, they either immediately think, oh, that's adorable, or they're terrified by it. Um, <laughs> there is definitely, she likes to say, you know, kind of creepy imagery, but um, it's the, for the purpose. Um, most of the goal of her work is she's addressing childhood abuse through the symbolism and metaphor of dressing children in these suits, these kind of protective suits, and the animals are usually metaphors for different types of childhood abuse. So, like I said, when it's, it's interesting to see different visitors react different ways, um, and I wonder if that brings certain things of their own past, and that's kind of what she's going for. It's yeah. certainly beautifully done, yes. I and mean, the surface is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her glazing techniques, just <clears throat> the texture, Everything. How does she do this? Do you know? Uh, I don't know the specific yeah. method, no. Well, I, I think just I sneak back to her studio once in a while yeah. and admire what she's yeah. doing. Well, it's very, you walk in and, you know, I, I was attracted to this and looking at it. And, uh, you know, there's this sophistication about <clears throat> what she's done with the surface. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very doll like. But, you know, there is a darkness that comes out mm -hmm. in the piece, and it's almost, you know, you look at the eyes, and it feels almost sinister. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting things and, and uh, opposites colliding in this piece. Yes. <clears throat> so, can we look at another piece, or...? Yeah, did you want another of hers or a different artist? Yeah, that's, yeah let's okay. look at um, another work of hers. Uh, let's, let's look at the, <clears throat> the little guys we have up here. Okay, that's great. These are really fun. She's been starting to do these smaller figures too. Empty costumes? Yeah. Vacated costumes yeah, it's like, of childhood? Or... Yeah, yeah I, I kind of think of them as what's left over after you've grown up. I mean, that's my own personal interpretation. Left behind. Left behind, what's left behind. Um, the innocence that's been lost, perhaps. But, um, you know, once again, they do kind of have an adorable factor to them. But there's nobody in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she had a quote that went with it. I forget who, who the quote was by, but it's the titles. It goes, ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again. Fail again, fail better. So. One of the things that comes through in these, again, just like the other figure that we just looked at, mm -hmm. is uh, combining opposites. Mm -hmm. You know, they're figurative, yet there's actually no living, nothing living. Right. And so they suggest, and the titles suggest, something living and something not living, mm -hmm. or an emptiness, a shell. And uh, they're really wonderful. And the surfaces are really great, too. Mm -hmm. She's done a great job with those. So, well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I just want to encourage people to come to the Convergence Gallery and uh, check out the work. Uh, Lillian's been really uh, gracious in having us today and looking at a lot of the work. and. Just encourage people to come out, visit the galleries, celebrate the local artists, celebrate these people that are bringing so many important ideas into our lives. And they're practicing with rituals that they're doing over and over and over again. So I encourage you to please come out and thank you for tuning in to, to uh, look before you speak today. Thank you very much.